Timmy, lights out. Timmy. Reading Rainbow is made possible by Barnes & Noble and BarnesandNoble.com for minds at play. Funding also provided by the National Science Foundation, which supports programs that enable children to succeed in science, mathematics, and technology. The Arthur Vining Davis Foundations. And the Corporation for Public Broadcasting. And by contributions to your PBS station from viewers like you. Thank you. Butterfly in the sky. I can go twice as high. It's in a book, a reading rainbow. I can go anywhere. Friends to know and ways to grow. A reading rainbow. I can be anything. Take a look. It's in. On a journey through one of the coolest places I know. It's an amazing part of the world full of incredible sights, sounds, and people. Can you guess where we are? That's right, the United States of America. One thing's for sure about the United States, it's gigantic. It's about 10 times the size of Egypt, 25 times the size of Japan, and almost 75 times the size of Greece. Because the United States is so huge, it can look and feel completely different from one place to the next. For instance, within our 50 states, we have deserts and rainforests, buttes and bayous, prairies and snowy tundra. But what a lot of folks don't realize is that we even have volcanoes, the most famous of which are found in the islands of Hawaii. Mauna Loa by Tom Robert Shields Read by Leia Salonga While Pacific Ocean's white surf gleams Rolling seas glide, shifting dreams Sudden thunders, a tumbled tune Breaking lazy beauty of calm, quiet noon Birds of paradise scatter, as all birds do. Mauna Loa gulps. Fire! Long overdue. That poem was from this book, My America, a collection of poetry that celebrates this great and grand country of ours. Even though our country is huge, for the most part, it's pretty easy to get from place to place. In fact, that's one of the things I love most about being the host of Reading Rainbow. Over the years, we've traveled thousands of miles, crisscrossing the country from Nebraska to New Mexico, from Maryland to Massachusetts. Okay, time for a pop quiz. Can you name all 50 states? Alabama. Alaska, Arizona, Arkansas, California, Colorado, Connecticut, Delaware, Florida, Georgia, Hawaii, Idaho, Illinois, Indiana, Iowa, Kansas, Kentucky, Louisiana, Maine, Maryland, Massachusetts, 
Michigan, Minnesota, Mississippi, Missouri, Montana, Nebraska, Nevada, New Hampshire, New Jersey, New Mexico, New York, North Carolina, North Dakota, Ohio, Oklahoma, Oregon, Pennsylvania, Rhode Island, South Carolina, South Dakota, Tennessee, Texas, Utah, Vermont, Virginia, Washington, West Virginia, Wisconsin, Wyoming. <laughs> that was well stated. America! In all of this land, you and I are only a few of the 300 million people who live here. And when you stretch us all out from Maui to Maine, it makes for pretty big differences in the kinds of homes we live in, the foods we eat, even the words we use. Even though we all pretty much speak the same language, there are plenty of differences too. Here, I'll show you what I mean. You see this? I call it a paper bag. But then some of you might call it a poke. And then again, some of you even might call it a sack. Let's look at another one. What do you call this? This is what I call a hot dog. Where I come from, we call it a footlong. I call it a Frank butter. It's a wiener. Okay, and how about these? Looks like tennis shoes to me. I call them sneakers. They're called kicks. I call them gym shoes. Hmm, and what do you call this? It's a grinder. I call it a submarine. Looks like a hoagie. That's what I call a hero. <laughs> Isn't it amazing that we use so many different words for the same thing? And speaking of words, here are a couple from the twin cities of Minnesota, Minneapolis and St. Paul. Hi, I'm Michael. And I'm Daniel. We're twins who have just moved to the Twin Cities, St. Paul and Minneapolis, right here in our new home state, Minnesota. If you like swimming, you'll love Minnesota. It's called the land of 10,000 lakes. Also great for fishing and canoeing. And if all that exercise makes you thirsty, help yourself to our state drink. It's milk. We even have a state muffin. The blueberry. What's yours? Minnesota is the home of the amazing Mall of America. It's so big. It has an indoor roller coaster, Ferris wheel, and aquarium. And my favorite, the Walker Arts Center in Minneapolis, has the country's biggest sculpture garden. So come on up to Minnesota. You'll have twice as much fun. The United States of America is so big, we have six different time zones. That means that at any given moment, it could be a completely different time in another part of the country. For instance, let's imagine it's three o'clock in the afternoon, Hawaiian Aleutian time. School's out. Time for me to go home. At the exact same moment, it's four o'clock, Alaska time. Time for soccer practice. Meanwhile, it just turned 5 o'clock, Pacific time. I have lots of homework to do. Which means it's 6 o'clock, mountain time. It's dinner time. <laughs> Which is the same as 7 o'clock, central time. I'm surfing the net which is exactly 8 o'clock Eastern Time. <sighs> it's time for bed. Isn't that something? When it's 3 o'clock in the afternoon, way out west in Hawaii, it's 8 o'clock at night all the way east. And in certain parts of the northeastern coast, nighttime brings its own special sights and sounds. New England Lighthouse. 
by Rebecca K. Gottlich. Narrated by Tom and Ray Maliazzi. It's a tower of stone, a refuge of white, with a code all its own, flashing constant and bright. It's a house made of iron, a home of concrete, a vigilant beacon for sailors at sea. It's a turret of lanterns, a castle of lights, a compass for ships as they pass through the nights. If you live in a big city, like Chicago, you can probably run down to the corner store for a carton of milk. But if you live in a rural area, say, in the Southwest, you might have to drive miles and miles to get to the nearest supermarket. Where we live really does shape how we grow up, down to the smallest details. This is Helmville, Montana, home to mountains, valleys, ranches, and Erica Mannix. I love living on a ranch because it's a rural area and there's lots of animals. Our ranch was homesteaded in 1882 and my brothers and I and my cousins are the fifth generation. On weekdays in the morning I usually get up and have breakfast. Got a big ball game coming up. You ready for your ball game? Mm-hmm. You got your uniform. And then I go up to the barn and I feed my colt. Come here, Jesse. Sometimes getting her out of the field is kind of difficult because she's stubborn sometimes, doesn't want to move. But she usually comes in okay. My favorite thing is probably being around horses, being with them. And I don't know, they're just a favorite animal. I like being around them, they're fun to be with. The bus picks us up at 8.45 and he drops us off at school. Oh, hi, Anna. I've known Anna for basically my whole life and I love to hang out together and gab and talk and <laughs> such. In the morning, we go down and sing. We sing the pledge and Grand Old Flag and Montana. Our school is very small. There's about 39 kids, including the kindergartners. I am in the sixth grade, and I have two classmates. Let's go over your review. I think going to school in a larger city would be a lot more difficult. You'd have to know more people, and the kids in the country, we know everybody. I've probably been riding for about 10 years since I was about two years old. Annalie and I love to ride together. It's really fun riding because you can be with the horse and it's more like being a partner. You have to control the horse, but you're still being partners. They're doing the work and you're kind of thinking about doing work. One of the things I love to do is go sledding. And we oftentimes get the whole family and go up to my great-grandfather's place and sled up there. There's not a movie theater, so we usually don't go to the movies. And there's not really a restaurant, and so we'll get together and have dinner together. <laughs> My family actually is fairly close. Oftentimes it's nice to get at the dinner table and actually be able to talk to them about what is going on. But I don't care much. <laughs> I also play the violin and I oftentimes play it or try to play it with my grandma Darlene. My family and friends mean a lot to me and I like to be near them and be around them. And I love ranching 
and being around animals. This is the only place I've really ever known. Meanwhile, thousands of miles away, in a place that seems as far from the mountains of Montana as the moon, is a big city. New York. Stephen White lives with his family in Jackson Heights, Queens. That's a neighborhood in New York City. If I was describing um, New York to a friend, I'd describe it as very busy. What do you want for breakfast? Who wants bananas? Uh, me. You want bananas? I get up around 6.45. Okay. My mom and dad drive me to school, but sometimes it's just my dad. It is really fun being alone just with my dad, driving to school on a Friday morning, Thursday morning. No, there was another guy. Mr. Who's the guy who was there yesterday? The after care. We usually talk about soccer, about school. <laughs> that makes me feel really good because I know I have someone to talk to. I do not believe it. My school is located in downtown Manhattan on 23rd Street and 1st Avenue. To get there, we cross the Queensboro Bridge into Manhattan. My school is the United Nations International School. It goes all the way up from kindergarten to 12th grade. Kids from all over the world go to it. My friend Irving, he comes from Spain. My friend Jordan, he's based in Africa. And my friend Juan Tramel, they're based in like Africa, Trinidad and Tobago. My teacher, Madame Agnery, is very nice. You hardly ever get in trouble with her. I've learned a lot of French such as um, J'aime le pizza et David est un singe. It means I love pizza and David is a monkey. David is one of my best friends. Bowling is really a lot of fun. I'm good at it, but I'm getting better. Try again. And my brother is really very good. We all really like bowling a lot. I take French horn lessons in school and I feel really good about playing the French horn. It's really a lot of fun to play. All you have to do is put your lips together and blow. I read a lot, two hours every day. I really, really get into the stories and it makes me think I'm going someplace. I close my eyes and sometimes I feel like I'm right there next to the character in the story. There's a Spanish restaurant called Natives and um, it serves a lot of Spanish food that's really very good. It's a restaurant my family and I like to take out food from. Eating dinner with my family is really a nice experience because we get to talk about whatever happened that day. Gabriel, what was it that your cousin said you said, said to you the other day? I have the beat. You have, you have the beat. That's why he wants to play drums. Now, Stefan, how are you doing with your horn? It's cool. I also like the drums. Well, maybe you and Gabriel can um, do the drum thing. <laughs> I love walking around New York because there are so many signs to look at, so many good places to eat, so many lights, so many sounds. Almost nobody gets bored in New York. I was raised mostly in California, but we traveled around quite a bit and I actually found out that I had a lot in common with kids who lived in other parts of the country. And you know what? So do you. And now, a word from the state of Washington. Calling all nature lovers! Hi, I'm Ashley, and I'm way up here in Washington, the evergreen state. This is the state for you. We have everything from sea lions to mountain lions. If you're a city slicker, you'll flip for Seattle. It's famous for its computers, 
and the Space Needle. So come on up to Washington and enter our annual Spam Carbon Contest. Check out this apple. Isn't it spamtacular? Okay, guys, it's time for another pop quiz, and this is a tough one. In the United States, where is the one place you can stand and be in four states at the same time? The Four Corners. That's where Colorado, Utah, New Mexico, and Arizona all meet together. Thanks, Anna. You're absolutely right. If you travel to the Four Corners, you'll find it's an incredibly stunning part of the country. But even if you never leave your hometown, a story or a poem can help you imagine not only what a place looks like, but what it sounds like and tastes like, too. Knoxville, Tennessee, by Nikki Giovanni. Read by Nikki Giovanni. I always like summer best. You can eat fresh corn from Daddy's garden. And okra and greens and cabbage and lots of barbecue and buttermilk and homemade ice cream at the church picnic. And listen to gospel music outside at the church homecoming. And go to the mountains with your grandmother. And go barefooted and be warm all the time, not only when you go to bed and sleep. If you're ever lucky enough to get down to Tennessee for a visit, you're in for a real treat. But even if you never get there, there are plenty of fascinating places to visit right in your own home state. And speaking of states, it's time for another word from one of our sponsors, the state of Florida. Hi, I'm Kathy. Looking for fun things to do? Well, come to my home, Florida. It's the Sunshine State, and it has it all. We've got beaches and theme parks, forests, cities, and swamplands. Our climate is subtropical, which means it's toasty warm year-round. It's perfect for the alligators and manatees who live in the Everglades. And check out the amazing islands of the Florida Keys, where you can go coral reef diving and swim with dolphins. So come to Florida and have an ice cold glass of orange juice to go. Thanks, Kathy. If the idea of exploring our country has given you the traveling bug, then here are three books that will map things out for you. But you don't have to take my word for it. Hi, I'm Maris. Did you ever wonder what might happen if the United States weren't so united? Find out in this book, The Scrambled States of America. It all begins with Kansas. He isn't happy with his place on the map. He convinces Nebraska, his next door neighbor, to have a party. All 50 states are invited. This is where the fun begins. At the party, the states decide to switch places with each other. Florida switched places with Minnesota and was freezing. And Minnesota got a sunburn. Soon, every state wanted to get back home. But if you want to find out how these scrambled states unscramble, you'll have to read this book, The Scrambled States of America. Hi, my name is Adam. If you like to travel to places you've never been to, and I have a great book for you. It's called... Tulip Sees America. The boy in the story lived with his parents in Ohio. When he grew up, he wanted to see America. So he bought a car, and he and his dog Tulip left Ohio and traveled west. They saw beautiful open skies. They saw so many amazing sights. When I read this book, I felt like I was on a big adventure. If you love adventures, then you will love Tulip Sees America. Hi, I'm Ryan. Do you want to find out some cool facts about the United States? Well, you can in this book called Celebrate the 50 States. Every state is in this book from Alabama to Wyoming. 
There's information galore. Mystic Connecticut is famous for its seaport. Kentucky is famous for its horse racing. New York has the Statue of Liberty. This is the kind of book you can browse through anytime. It's a lot of fun. So check out Celebrate the 50 States. The United States of America is a great country because of what it is. A gigantic group of amazingly different people and places bound together by a common identity. From the snow-capped mountains of Washington to the white sandy beaches of the Florida coast. It's no wonder we call it America the Beautiful. I'll see you next time. Today's Reading Rainbow books are My America, a poetry atlas of the United States, selected by Lee Bennett Hopkins, illustrated by Stephen Alcorn, published by Simon & Schuster. Celebrate the 50 States by Lorene Leedy, published by Holiday House. The Scrambled States of America by Lori Keller, published by Henry Holt & Company. Tulip Sees America by Cynthia Ryland, illustrated by Lisa DeSimony, Published by Blue Sky Scholastic. Timmy, lights out. Timmy. Reading Rainbow is made possible by Barnes & Noble and BarnesandNoble.com for minds at play. Funding also provided by the National Science Foundation, which supports programs that enable children to succeed in science, mathematics, and technology. The Arthur Vining Davis Foundation and the Corporation for Public Broadcasting, and by contributions to your PBS station from viewers like you. Thank you.